Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and professor from Johnson County Community College. And in this short screencast, we're going to do part one of chapter three in chapter exercise, which ends up looking like this. Our HTML and JavaScript are using three arrays to place this content in this table. We have three arrays, one with the days of the week, Sunday through Saturday, one with our opponent names, lightning, combines, combines, and so forth. And then a third that determines if the game is away, in which case we want to put this at symbol into our table, our calendar, or a home game, in which case we want to write VS. And so our code looks like this. Our comments are at the top. Please always fill out your name and the current date. And then we have three global variables, which are really arrays. All an array is, is a list of variables that we're giving one name. So we're saying days of week, you are this list of values. We're using the var, var, variable keyword. We're stating the variable name. We're setting it equal to, and then a list of values that are in square brackets. Now, because all of our variables are textual, they are also surrounded by quotation marks. If these variables were numbers, we would not need to use the quotation mark delimiters. One important thing to realize about arrays is they start numbering themselves with the number zero. So this is days of week zero, days of week one, days of week two, so on and so forth. Our second global variable is also an array, and it's the name of our opponents. Lightning, combines, 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 lightning. And we see lightning, combines, 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 lightning in our table. And here are the rest of our opponent names. Our third array is the game location. And it starts with one, two, three, four aways, and then three homes in this first line. One, two, three, four at symbols. And then we have one, two, three, four, and several more home games where we just put verses in the table with our global arrays discussed a little bit. Let's go down and look at our first function. In this case, you already know that a function is simply a name followed by a left and right parenthesis given to several statements of code. The difference in chapter three is that you're using these control structures to repeat your code as many times as needed to accomplish a task. So to add column headers, this function is going to add Sunday through Saturday to that first row of our table. Within our function, we're declaring a variable i, and we're going to now run a statement based on a while statement. The while loop is one of our simplest loops. It simply reiterates this code while whatever's in the parentheses is true. So we start i off at zero, and so it's certainly true for our first pass through this code. It's less than seven. So we're gonna run the while statements inside these curly braces. To me, this is one of the harder syntactual things in JavaScript is that we know that our function statements are surrounded by curly braces, also, all of our control loops are surrounded by curly braces. So please do code your statements in this way so that it makes it easy to find and match up the uh, matching curly braces in Notepad++. When you click beside one of the opening or closing curly brace, the other gets lit up in red. Let's see what this statement is doing. Document.getElementsByTagName. This is the first time you've used this particular method, and it differs from getElementById in two ways. We know that the ID equal to something in HTML has to be unique per page. Here, tag names, and in this case, the th tag, we can have several th tags. In fact, we do in our HTML, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sets of th tags in our first table row. Notice that the argument name is plural, get elements by tag name, because there may be more than one of them. So we're getting the th tag, and how do we know which th tag we're getting? Uh, due to this appendage of square bracket i square bracket. The first time through, i is zero. So just like our array, when we reference the first th tag in our HTML, we're referencing position zero. So this goes seven days of the week, and so they're numbered zero through six. So the first time through, we're looking at th position zero, his inner HTML property, and we're setting it equal to days of week zero, because I is zero at this point in time. And what is days of week zero? It's Sunday, because days of week is an array, and this is how you call the position of the array. You put the numeric value 
that corresponds with the array position in these square brackets. So this statement puts Sunday in the th zeros inner HTML property. So we have Sunday in the table. Then we I plus plus, we increment I by one. We go back to the top of the control statement and we check. I is now equal to one. Is it still less than seven? Yes. So do this again. TH position one becomes days of week position one, which is Monday. And it loops through here seven times, zero through six. When it hits Saturday, which is position six, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, it will increment by one, come back to the top and check. Now I is seven. Is I less than seven? No. So we stop running this loop. And that's the function add column headers that puts in Sunday through Saturday in your first row of your table. Thank you.